in an industry where talent shines bright. Doris Day stands out as a beacon of success. With her captivating performances and melodious voice, she charmed audiences worldwide. Let's delve into the story of this remarkable actress and singer. Actress Doris Day was a beloved Hollywood star known for her roles in classic films like Pillow Talk and Calamity Jane. Which work of actress Doris Day do you hold closest to your heart? Are there any lesser known facts or anecdotes about actress Doris Day that fascinate you? Share your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this classic star in the comments below. Stay tuned as we uncover funny, shocking, and sad facts about her. We would love to hear your stories and memories. Doris Day was born to Alma and William Kappelhoff in Cincinnati, Ohio. She had a difficult upbringing during the Great Depression. Her mother encouraged her to sing and dance, paving the way for her future career. Doris Day's early exposure to music came from her father, who was a music teacher and choir master. She began singing on a local radio program, which led to her discovery as a singer. Day's key influence was bandleader Barney Rapp, who gave her the stage name Doris Day. He also helped her launch her career in show business. Doris Day was an influential actress in Hollywood during her era and beyond. She had a significant impact on the film industry through her versatile acting skills, charming personality, and powerful screen presence. Known for her roles in romantic comedies and musicals, Day brought a sense of joy and optimism to her films, captivating audiences worldwide. Her contribution to Hollywood was immense as she starred in numerous successful movies and worked with renowned directors and actors. Day's talent and professionalism set a high standard in the industry inspiring many aspiring actors and actresses to follow in her footsteps. Beyond her acting career, Doris Day was also a talented singer, achieving great success with her music albums and becoming a beloved icon in both the entertainment and music worlds. Her legacy continues to resonate with audiences today, making her a timeless figure in the history of cinema. Doris Day discovered her passion for acting at a young age when she was cast in a school play. The thrill of performing in front of an audience and receiving applause ignited a spark within her. Her love for entertaining and bringing characters to life on stage only grew stronger with each experience. As she honed her craft, the encouragement and positive feedback she received from teachers and peers fueled her desire to pursue a career in acting. This early exposure to the magic of theater and the joy of embodying different roles set her on a path towards becoming a beloved actress. In Italy, Rosetta Calavetta often dubbed Doris Day in her films. Sometimes, Dihia Cristiani, Rina Morley, or Lydia Simonski also lent their voices to her characters in The Man Who Knew Too Much. In Romance on the High Seas, Day played Georgia Garrett and sang T for Two in the song Put Em in a Box, Tie Em with a Ribbon. Later, she starred in a film titled T for Two. Before 1951, Doris Day smoked two 12-packs of cigarettes daily. Doris Day faced many challenges early in her career, including financial struggles and industry skepticism. Despite these obstacles, she showed great resilience and found creative solutions to overcome them. She worked hard to establish herself as a talented actress and singer, taking on diverse roles to showcase her versatility. Through determination and hard work, Doris Day was able to navigate the competitive entertainment industry and eventually became a beloved star known for her talent and charm. Doris Day and Frank Lovejoy appeared in four films together due to their contracts with Warner Brothers. They were seen in the winning team, Starlift, and I'll See You in My Dreams along with Julie. At the 1954 Academy Awards, Doris Day did not sing Secret Love from Calamity Jane, even though her recording of the song was a chart topper. Instead, Anne Blythe performed it, and the song won the Best Song Oscar. Producer Martin Melcher kept film costs low, and struck a deal with Chrysler Motors to provide cars for Doris Day's projects. This arrangement continued throughout her later career and featured prominently in the Doris Day show and her subsequent works until her retirement. Doris Day had a breakthrough moment in her career with the film Calamity Jane. This project showcased her talent for both acting and singing, earning her critical acclaim and a Golden Globe Award. Her performance in Pillow Talk further solidified her status as a leading lady in Hollywood. 
collaborators, and critics praise her natural charm, comedic timing, and on-screen chemistry with co-stars. These achievements helped define Doris Day as a beloved and iconic actress of her time. Doris Day played Joe Jordan in Young Man with a Horn and found the experience unpleasant due to her past as a band singer and feeling excluded by Kirk Douglas and Lauren Buckhall. In Calamity Jane, she portrayed the character, though the real Calamity Jane's relationship with Hickok is likely fictional. In Teacher's Pet, she won a Golden Flame Award for her role as a journalism professor. Doris Day approached her work with a natural charm and grace that set her apart in Hollywood. Known for her wholesome image and bubbly personality, Day infused her performances with a sense of joy and warmth that resonated with audiences. Her personal experiences, including a challenging upbringing and a love for animals, shaped her worldview and were often reflected in her roles. Day's unique style combined comedy, romance, and music, creating a signature blend that endeared her to fans around the world. In the 1963 film Move Over, Darling, Doris Day starred as Ellen Wagstaff Arden alongside James Garner, marking their second collaboration that year after the thrill of it all. Both movies were major successes, making Day the top box office star of the year. In Julie, Day played the role of Julie Benton, and the cars featured in the movie included a 1956 DeSoto Firedome, a 1956 Plymouth Belvedere sedan, and a 1956 Dodge Custom Royal. Day's musical talent shone through in films like Calamity Jane and The Man Who Knew Too Much, where songs like Secret Love and Quesera Cyril won Academy Awards for Best Original Song, while others like It's Magic and Julie received nominations. Doris Day made a significant impact in the film industry with her charming and versatile performances. She influenced trends by portraying strong, independent female characters that resonated with audiences. Day's talent in acting, singing, and dancing set a standard for performers in Hollywood. Industry experts praise her natural charisma and ability to connect with viewers, inspiring many actors and actresses to follow in her footsteps. Day's legacy continues to shape storytelling in film and remains a timeless influence in the entertainment world. Doris Day, known for her role as Kate Robinson Mackay in Please Don't Eat the Daisies, shared the character Babe Williams with Janice Page in The Pajama Game. In the film adaptation, Doris portrayed Babe while Page took on the role on Broadway. In another film, Day sported a black lace negligee at a supermarket in Please Don't Eat the Daisies and a dark lace garment in Midnight Lace. She received much attention for her on-screen attire, with studios ensuring she was stylishly dressed. In the Doris Day show, Doris Martin, Day often invited past colleagues from her 20-year film career to guest star. Actors like Jackie Joseph, Mary Wicks, Billy D. Wolf, and Ellen Corby made appearances. Day also fulfilled her wish of working with stars like Rose Marie, Peter Lawford, Van Johnson, Tony Bennett, and Lou Ayers on the show. Doris Day was known for her love of animals, which greatly influenced her work. She was a dedicated advocate for animal welfare and even founded the Doris Day Animal Foundation to support this cause. Her personal values of kindness and compassion shone through in her philanthropic efforts as she worked tirelessly to protect and care for animals in need. This deep commitment to helping others, both human and animal, added depth and sincerity to her performances on screen making her a beloved figure both on and off the camera. Doris Day shone in Love Me or Leave Me with its soundtrack dominating the charts. In Move Over, Darling, a clever filming tactic involving a car wash added a fun twist. Calamity Jane saw Day's talent recognized with a leading role after a studio negotiation. Each film showcased Day's versatility in the industry. Doris Day made a lasting impact in the entertainment industry with her charm, talent, and versatile performances. Her legacy as an actress and singer continues to inspire aspiring professionals in the field. For those looking to follow in her footsteps, Doris Day would advise them to stay true to themselves, work hard, and always strive for excellence. She would encourage them to embrace challenges 
learn from failures, and never lose sight of their passion. By staying dedicated, humble, and open-minded, aspiring professionals can carve out their own unique path towards success in the industry. Doris Day and Vera Ellen, both notable figures in Hollywood's golden age, shared a common background in their early years. They attended the same Cincinnati ballroom dance studio, and their parents even carpooled together. In the film Midnight Lace, Doris Day portrayed Kit Preston, delivering a particularly memorable performance. During a scene where she receives a taunting phone call, Day became so overwhelmed with emotion that she couldn't stop crying even after the director called cut. As for the film Send Me No Flowers, Doris Day took on the role of Judy and contributed to the soundtrack with her rendition of the title tune. This song was a product of the newly formed songwriting team of Hal David and Burt Bacharach. Doris Day's passion for acting, her innovative approach to entertainment, and her enduring impact on the industry have left a lasting mark. Her journey serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of creativity and perseverance in pursuing one's dreams. Day's legacy will continue to inspire future generations to embrace their talents and push boundaries in pursuit of their goals. Doris Day, in her role as Josephine Conway McKenna in The Man Who Knew Too Much, wore a gray lady's suit in the London scenes that bears a resemblance to Kim Novak's suit in Vertigo, another Hitchcock film. The costume designer for both films was Edith Head. This movie marked the beginning of Day's lifelong commitment to preventing animal abuse. She was so disturbed by the treatment of animal extras that she refused to work unless they were properly cared for, leading to the establishment of feeding stations for the animals. Day's performance in Pillow Talk as Jan Morrow earned her only Oscar nomination. Despite not winning, her work in the film is still highly regarded and showcases her talent as an actress. Through her roles in various films, Doris Day has left a lasting impact on the industry and continues to be celebrated for her contributions. Doris Day played memorable roles in iconic movies. In The Man Who Knew Too Much, she portrayed Josephine Conway McKenna with Bernard Herrmann conducting the orchestra. In Please Don't Eat the Daisies, she sang Quisira Sarah as Kate Robinson Mackey. In Move Over, Darling, as Ellen Wagstaff Arden, the music Something's Gotta Give paid homage to its original version. Each film showcased Doris Day's talent and charm, leaving a lasting impression on audiences. Doris Day starred as Ruth Edding in Love Me or Leave Me, her first film after leaving Warner Brothers. This role allowed her to showcase her dramatic acting skills, something she had longed to do. Following this success, she took on the challenging role of Judy in Send Me No Flowers. The animated fireworks scene in the movie was originally created for another film she starred in. In Julie, they portrayed Julie Benton, a character mirroring her real-life struggles with jealousy and relationships. Her on-screen chemistry with co-star Louis Jourdine reflected her own personal challenges with her producer husband. Doris Day became America's top female box office draw after the success of Pillow Talk. This also led to her being a Best Actress Oscar contender. In Move Over, Darling, she reunited with Thelma Ritter from Pillow Talk. During Young Man with a Horn, Kirk Douglas warned her about her manager Martin Melcher's financial advice. Day married Melcher, but after his death, she found out he had mismanaged her earnings, leaving her heavily in debt to the IRS. In the movie Love Me or Leave Me, Doris Day plays Ruth Edding. While singing Everybody Loves My Baby, you can spot Herb Alpert playing the trumpet in the band behind her. Alpert was an actor before gaining fame with his band. In Move Over, Darling, Day portrays Ellen Wagstaff Arden and drives a 1963 Chrysler Imperial through a car wash. In Teacher's Pet, she is Erica Stone. When James Gannon joins her class, he uses the name Gallagher, linking to Clark Gable's previous role as Blackie Gallagher. Doris Day's role as Georgia Garrett in Romance on the High Seas marked her debut as a promising star and introduced her hit song It's Magic. Her son Terry Melcher's connection to the infamous Manson family and the tragic events at 10,050 Silo Drive added a dark chapter to the family's history. In Lover Come Back, Irene's suicide, allegedly linked to unrequited love for Gary Cooper, cast a somber shadow over the film's legacy. Day's career was not without its share of personal tragedies and mysteries intertwined with her success on the silver screen. 
in the movie Move Over. Darling released in December 1963. Doris Day plays the character Ellen Wagstaff Arden. A scene in the movie makes a reference to a significant event involving astronaut Gordon Cooper's rescue by the U.S. Navy. This was highlighted as the greatest Navy rescue since Gordon Cooper. In the TV series The Doris Day Show, which premiered on CBS in September 1968, Critics pointed out that Doris Day's character, Doris Martin, was once again portrayed as a widow. Some critics sarcastically questioned why so many of Day's characters' husbands were deceased, humorously suggesting various causes of death. Doris Day also co-starred with Gig Young in four films Young at Heart, Teacher's Pet, The Tunnel of Love, and That Touch of Mink. In 1962, Doris Day was voted the top audience attracting film star in North America. In the movie Love Me or Leave Me, she delicately sang the Oscar-nominated ballad, I'll Never Stop Loving You to a Piano Accompaniment. Columbia Records backed her single with Percy Faith and his orchestra, reaching number 15 on Billboard's top-selling singles. Ronald L. Smith's Who's Who in Comedy includes her biography on pages 133-134. This showcases her talent and popularity in the entertainment industry. Doris Day faced creative challenges during her show. She favored fashion shows over scripts. In that touch of mink, doubles were used for Bermuda scenes to match studio attire. Day's stellar performance in Love Me or Leave Me impressed Cagney and Hitchcock, leading to her role in The Man Who Knew Too Much. Despite her talent, Day was overlooked for an Oscar nomination, but her dramatic skills shone in this film. Doris Day, known for her roles such as Doris Martin, Kit Preston, and Georgia Garrett, had some interesting experiences throughout her acting career. In her autobiography, she recalls the unexpected obligation to do the Doris Day show after her husband's death. Despite not receiving an Academy Award, she was nominated for Best Actress in a Drama for Midnight Lace. During Romance on the High Seas, she felt self-conscious about her performance, but was encouraged by the director not to change a thing. Doris Day was honored with two stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. One recognized her work in motion pictures, located at 16735 Hollywood BLVD, while the other was for her achievements in recording, situated at 16278 Hollywood BLVD. In the movie Pillow Talk, a scene went awry when actor Tony Randall was accidentally knocked unconscious by a punch from John Indrasano. Additionally, in the film Send Me No Flowers, Rock Hudson's character, George, pretends to be Doris Day's husband. These incidents showcase some unexpected moments in Doris Day's acting career. Doris Day effortlessly played Ellen Wagstaff Arden in Move Over, Darling. The filming at the Beverly Hills Hotel was a breeze for her as she lived nearby. In the Doris Day show, her husband negotiated a deal that earned him a credit posthumously. As Ruth Edding in Love Me or Leave Me, Day sported a honey blonde look, a departure from her usual style. It was a one-time change that suited her well. Doris Day played Calamity Jane in the film Calamity Jane. She was the last surviving cast member after Aline Ann McClory passed away in 2010. Later, Doris Day passed away in May 2019 at age 97. During the filming of Julie in 1956, Day had a hysterectomy due to a tumor the size of a grapefruit. She also starred as Doris Martin in The Doris Day Show and used the Oscar-winning song Quesera, Sera as the theme music. The song mirrored her life philosophy and became one of her best-selling recordings. Doris Day played Doris Martin in The Doris Day Show. Her husband, Martin Melcher, secured a deal with Chrysler to provide all cars for the show. Every vehicle scene was from Chrysler. In Julie, her second film, produced by Arwen Productions, owned by Day and Melcher, Julie Benton is portrayed. Send Me No Flowers features Day as Judy. Look closely to spot houses from the Munsters and the Ghost and Mr. Chicken when characters drive down the street where Doris Day lies with Rock Hudson. In the Doris Day show's first season, it didn't do well in ratings despite having a popular lead-in. But in the second season, things changed as Doris's character moved to San Francisco and the show became a hit. In Pillow Talk, Doris wore a platinum blonde wig, inspiring many women to buy similar wigs. In That Touch of Mink, one of the potential husbands for Doris's character was Rock Hudson, her close friend and frequent co-star. 
Their on-screen chemistry translated into a lifelong friendship. Doris Day starred as Ellen Wagstaff Arden in Move Over, Darling alongside James Garner. The movie featured a convertible filled with water driven into a swimming pool. In the thrill of it all, the car goes through a car wash with a top down. In the Doris Day show, Fran Ryan played the housekeeper, but was replaced by Naomi Stevens after conflicts with Day. Pillow Talk marked the first of three films with Day, Rock Hudson, and Tony Randall, followed by Lover Come Back and Send Me No Flowers, where they portrayed different roles in each film. Doris Day, known for her role in the movie Julie, also contributed to the film's title tune despite not singing in the character. In Romance on the High Seas, she played Georgia Garrett and had a brief duet with Janice Page in the movie trailer. This showcased Day's versatility as both an actress and a singer, highlighting her talents in different aspects of the entertainment industry. Doris Day, a beloved actress and singer, was actively engaged in animal welfare advocacy as of 2008, managing the Doris Day Animal League in Carmel, California. The league aims to ensure proper care and safe homes for household pets. In addition to her work in animal welfare, Day has left a significant mark in the world of music and entertainment. She is referenced in the 1984 hit single Wake Me Up Before You Go Go by the pop duo Wham. The song's lyrics include the line You Can Ring My Bell, which is a nod to Day's 1954 hit Secret Love. Going back to the early days of her career, Day sang My Lost Horizon with Les Brown and his band of renown in a 1941 Soundies production. This marked one of her many appearances in films and television shows throughout her career, showcasing her talent and versatility as a performer. Doris Day, the granddaughter of Frank and Agnes Kappelhoff, who hailed from Germany, found her way into Hollywood through a chance encounter at a showbiz party. When Sammy Kahn heard her sing, he knew she was perfect for the role of Georgia Garrett in Romance on the High Seas. Similarly, in the film Julie, originally, and Francis was considered for the lead role until Doris Day was brought in by Martin Melcher, resulting in a bigger box office draw. In both instances, Day's talent and charisma shone through, propelling her to stardom in the world of entertainment. In the film Move Over, Darling, Doris Day sang a song called Twinkle Lullaby while tucking her children into bed. The filmmakers hoped it would be as popular as her famous song Quesera Sera. However, when released as the flip side of the film's title tune on a 45 RPM single, it didn't get much airplay. In Please Don't Eat the Daisies, Day played Kate Robinson Mackey. The musical number she rehearses for an amateur show, Anyway the Wind Blows, was actually written for a previous film of hers, Pillow Talk. The song title even served as a working title for that film at one point. In Romance on the High Seas, Day portrayed Georgia Garrett. It was in this film that Oscar Levant made a witty remark, I knew Doris Day before she was a virgin, referring to Day's innocent image at the time. Doris Day, in the 1956 film The Man Who Knew Too Much, was given a large drinking glass of alcohol by James Stewart, who told her it was like medicine. This mirrored a similar scene in the 1941 film Mr. and Mr. Smith, where Carol Lombard told Jean Raymond the same thing. Throughout her career, Day's husband and producer, Martin Melcher, played a significant role. Between 1956 and his death in 1968, he produced 18 of her movies and was credited as executive producer for the first season of The Doris Day Show. However, Day later revealed that Melcher had been signing her up for films without her consent by the mid-1960s. She was forced to do movies such as Do Not Disturb, The Ballad of Josie, Caprice, and Where Were You When the Lights Went Out, despite not liking the scripts. She also discovered, after Melcher's death, that he had signed her up for The Doris Day Show without her knowledge. In Pillow Talk, Doris Day starred alongside Thelma Ritter, and they later reunited in Move Over, Darling. Despite the challenges she faced in her career, Day remained a beloved and respected figure in Hollywood. Doris Day starred in the movie Pillow Talk as Jan Morrow, which used split-screen optics to create clever sexual innuendos, like a scene where it appears she and Rock Hudson share a bathtub. In The Man Who Knew Too Much, she initially dismissed recording Quesera, Sarah as a kid's song, 
but it later won an Academy Award and became her signature tune. Edith Schneider dubbed her voice in many of her German films. This iconic song was also featured in two more movies and served as the theme song for her TV show. Doris Day, known for her roles in movies such as Teacher's Pet and Romance on the High Seas, had an eventful career. Despite a rainy turn of events at a party for the press in her Beverly Hills home, Day's charm and talent shone through, leading to a successful seven-year contract with Warner Brothers after her debut. Her collaborations with Mary Wicks in several films and TV appearances further showcased her versatile acting skills and enduring appeal. Through her work, Doris Day left a lasting impact on the entertainment industry. Doris Day expressed surprise to the media when she revealed she was unaware of Rock Hudson's homosexuality following his death in 1985. Despite a decline in her box office appeal by 1968, Day remained a significant movie star, ranking 14th that year. She co-owned the Cypress Inn in Carmel by the Sea with her son Terry Melcher and a partner. The inn boasts a charming Mediterranean design reminiscent of the famous Hotel California. During the filming of That Touch of Mink, Doris Day and Cary Grant had a conflict over which profile to use for close-ups. Grant eventually gave in to Day's preference. In Romance on the High Seas, Day stepped in after Betty Hutton's unplanned pregnancy. Day took on the role, but was billed forth and earned a lower salary. In The Doris Day Show, Lord Nelson the Sheepdog causes chaos in the city. Ellen Corby makes an uncredited appearance honking at Doris and Lord Nelson. Doris Day was given the nickname Clara Bixby by Billy Dee Wolf on the set of Tea for Two. She kept this name among close friends like Van Johnson. In Romance on the High Seas, she played Georgia Garrett and released songs like I'm in Love, Put Em in a Box, and It's Magic. It's Magic became her biggest hit. Her second husband was George Weidler, a saxophone player and former child actor. George's sister was Virginia Weidler, an MGM child actress. In the 1960 film Midnight Lace, Doris Day, playing the role of Kit Preston, enters the Bristol building, where an eerie atmosphere awaits. The board of directors discuss a financial scandal and a telephone conversation between the treasurer, Charles Manning, and a bookmaker about gambling debts ensues. The identity of the real embezzler is revealed much later in the film. Doris Day's love for dogs went beyond mere companionship. She once claimed that her dog saved her life. One night, she woke up to find her dogs acting strangely. Deciding to take them outside, she approached the backyard door, but the dogs hesitated. Suddenly, a massive tree fell in the yard, missing her by a narrow margin. In the Doris Day show, Day portrayed Doris Martin, and Denver Pyle played her father, despite being only two years older than her. This casting choice added an interesting dynamic to the show, which aired from 1968 to 1973. Overall, Doris Day's career and personal life were marked by intriguing moments and anecdotes, showcasing her resilience, talent, and love for animals. Doris Day's portrayal of Ruth heading in Love Me or Leave Me was considered her best performance according to her memoir. She was the last surviving cast member from Calamity Jane. In the Doris Day show, she played Doris Martin and revealed in her autobiography that during the first season, she was just fulfilling a contractual obligation. With her husband's passing and financial mismanagement by her late husband and his lawyer, she found herself nearly broke after a successful 20-year film career. Doris Day took on the role of Beverly Boy in The Thrill of It All, originally intended for Judy Holliday. Following that, she starred in Move Over, Darling, a role initially meant for Marilyn Monroe. In Julie, while preparing for her part, Day experienced a car accident but remained unfazed. Interestingly, the song in Calamity Jane referenced a film she also starred in the same year, By the Light of the Silvery Moon. Doris Day is well known for her successful film collaborations with co-stars Rock Hudson and Tony Randall, including Pillow Talk in 1959, Lover Come Back in 1961, and Send Me No Flowers in 1964. In each of these films, Day and Hudson played love interests, while Randall took on the role of Hudson's close friend. Day's popularity was at an all-time high during this period, 
As she was named the number one box office star for eight consecutive years by more than 5,000 exhibitors polled at the annual Laurel Awards in December 1964. One of Day's most memorable roles was as Ellen Wagstaff Arden in the 1963 film Move Over, Darling. During filming, Day suffered from cracked ribs, which made it difficult for her to breathe and painful to laugh due to the heavy bandages and tape she had to wear under her costumes. Despite this, Day persevered and delivered a memorable performance. In Romance on the High Seas, Doris Day sang its magic at the 1949 Oscars. Although the Best Song Award went to a different tune, her performance left an impression. In Send Me No Flowers, she portrayed Judy alongside Rock Hudson for the last time. Their characters were married from the start. In That Touch of Mink, Doris Day played Kathy Timberlake. The movie showed improvements in New York City apartments' phone services since Pillow Talk. Pastel-colored phones were becoming popular, like the yellow rotary dial model in the film. Doris Day quickly rose to stardom in Hollywood and dominated the box office rankings throughout her film career. She was the leading lady in several successful movies, showcasing her talent and versatility on the big screen. In Midnight Lace, Day's dedication to her role resulted in a powerful performance that resonated with audiences. Her commitment to her craft is evident in the emotional depth she brought to her characters, such as in The Man Who Knew Too Much, where she portrayed Josephine Conway McKenna, a role that mirrored her character in Young Man with a Horn. Day's ability to bring authenticity and realism to her performances captivated audiences and solidified her status as one of the most beloved actresses of the 20th century. Doris Day, ex-mother-in-law of Jacqueline Carlin and grandmother of Ryan Melcher, showcased her talent in the romantic comedy Pillow Talk. Despite initial reluctance from theater managers due to changing movie preferences, the film became a hit after a successful run at the Palace Theater in New York. Day's charm alongside Rock Hudson revitalized the romantic comedy genre for eager audiences. In another film, Move Over, Darling, Day starred with James Garner and Elliot Reed, showcasing her comedic prowess once again. Day's ability to bring humor and warmth to the screen made her a beloved figure in classic Hollywood cinema. Doris Day, known for her role as Kathy Timberlake in That Touch of Mink, portrayed a character much younger than her actual age of 39. In Julie, she discovered love for Carmel by the sea while filming and later settled there until her passing in 2019. As Georgia Garrett in Romance on the High Seas, Day overcame a failed screen test to secure her place in the film, thanks to producer Henry Blank and composer Jules Stein's intervention. Through perseverance and talent, Doris Day left a lasting mark on Hollywood. After a car accident in 1937, Doris Day spent her teenage years in a wheelchair where she started singing on the radio. In the film The Thrill of It All, she played Beverly Boye with Carl Reiner making a funny appearance. Her son, Terry Melcher, passed away in 2004 from melanoma at the age of 62. Doris Day showed her dedication to realism in her role as Julie Benton in the film Julie by learning how to handle a plane's controls from actual Transocean Airlines pilots. The movie had a modest budget of $785,000 as Arwen Productions aimed to keep costs low. In another role as Erica Stone in Teacher's Pet, Doris Day's interactions with co-star Mamie Van Doren were less than friendly, leading Van Doren to describe her as cold and difficult tenant despite this, they later posed together for a photo at the film's premiere. Doris Day, known for her roles in movies like Julie and Pillow Talk, had an interesting personal life. In Julie, her mother made a brief appearance alongside her. Day was scared of flying due to past experiences during tours with Bob Hope. She almost turned down a role in The Man Who Knew Too Much, but was convinced by her husband to take it. There were plans for a sequel to Pillow Talk in 1980, but it never happened. Both Day and Rock Hudson were interested, but Day's retirement from acting played a role in its cancellation. Doris Day rode Joel McCrea's horse, Dollar, in Calamity Jane. Day and Janie's Page shared the screen three times, including Romance on the High Seas. Day replaced Page in the Pajama Game film adaptation. In 1989, Day missed the Oscars due to a leg cut from a sprinkler at her hotel. 
In the film Julie, Doris Day's role as Julie Benton reflects her real-life abusive relationship with her first husband Al Jordan, who was known to mistreat her. In the Doris Day show, Day unknowingly signed a contract negotiated by her husband, Martin Melcher, who later squandered her earnings, leaving her in debt. Edward Andrews appeared in multiple films with Day, including Send Me No Flowers, showcasing their collaboration in several projects. In Calamity Jane, Doris Day portrayed a wild woman of the Old West, echoing another legendary character. The film was born out of Jack Warner's failed attempt to secure the rights to Annie Get Your Gun for Day. Interestingly, Howard Keel, who starred in the movie version of Annie Get Your Gun, also appeared alongside Day in Calamity Jane. On the other hand, in Pillow Talk, Day played Jan Morrow in a nod to the era's popular sex comedies. This movie paid tribute to the comedic collaborations between Day, Rock Hudson, and Tony Randall. Finally, in the Doris Day show, Day's character transitioned from farm life to San Francisco, a move that saved the series during a time when rural sitcoms were being replaced by urban-themed shows on television. Doris Day co-starred with Gordon McRae in five films T for Two, The West Point Story, On Moonlight Bay, Starlift, and By the Light of the Silvery Moon. She was profiled in the book film Fatales Women and Espionage Films, in television, 1962-1973 by Thomas Lasanti and Louis Paul in Twenty. In Pillow Talk, as Jan Morrow, she faces a long trip from Scarsdale to Manhattan, but Tony Walters steps up to drive her, despite just returning from Harvard. Mistress Walters' request might have put him on the spot after a tiring journey or personal plans, but he agrees nonetheless. Doris Day worked alongside Jack Carson in three movies Romance on the High Seas, My Dream is Yours, and it's a great feeling. In Midnight Lays, she played Kit Preston, and her outfits were designed by Irene, who sadly passed away after the film. Day struggled with amblyopia, noticeable in her close-up during an interview on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson on September 2, 1974. Doris Day, known for her roles in The Doris Day Show, Romance on the High Seas, and Julie, made significant decisions in her career. From ending her own successful TV series, to facing age misrepresentation by the studio, and even battling health issues, Day navigated various challenges with resilience. Despite setbacks, Day's determination and talent shone through, leaving a lasting mark on the entertainment industry. Doris Day starred in That Touch of Mink alongside Cary Grant when she was 39, and he was 57. Initially known as Kappelhoff, Band leader Barney Rapp suggested the name Day from her song Day by Day. Doris Day wasn't keen on it, finding it too showy. In Pillow Talk, producer Ross Hunter had her and Rock Hudson present an Oscar together at the 1959 Academy Awards. Doris Day's on screen fashions, particularly in films like Pillow Talk, Midnight Lace, and The Glass Bottom Boat were a major influence on 1950s and 60s fashion trends. After her portrayal of Ruth Edding in Love Me or Leave Me, Day received a wave of criticism from fans who were uncomfortable with her character's lewd behavior and revealing costumes. Despite being a Christian scientist, Day believed in the importance of realism and responded to every piece of mail, explaining her artistic choices. And Send Me No Flowers, Day starred alongside Rock Hudson, who, unbeknownst to the public at the time, was a closeted gay man. The film features Hudson's character, who believes he is dying, setting up potential future husbands for Day's character, Judy. In a tragic coincidence, four years later, Day's real-life husband and film executive producer, Martin Melcher, died from an enlarged heart, leaving Day with unexpected financial troubles. Doris Day starred as Kit Preston in Midnight Lace, a thriller that left her emotionally drained. She kept her promise to avoid thrillers and focused on comedies until her retirement. In The Man Who Knew Too Much, she was set to co-produce with James Stewart and Alfred Hitchcock, but ended up not being part of the final deal. This might be due to her husband manager, Martin Melcher, who mishandled her finances. In Lover Come Back, Doris Day's passing in 2019 marked the end of an era as none of the credited cast members survived her. Doris Day, 
known for her roles in Lover Come Back, Romance on the High Seas, and Julie had lasting relationships with her co-stars. After Donna Douglas's death in 2015, Day became the longest living cast member of Lover Come Back until her own passing in 2019, 58 years after the film's release. In her debut film, Romance on the High Seas, Day met at Zisakal, and they formed a close friendship that lasted until his death. Day considered Seikal one of her favorite co-stars. For her role in Julie, Day underwent three weeks of stewardess training to prepare, showcasing her dedication to her craft. Doris Day appeared as Julie Benton in the movie Julie, where she was pictured smoking, a rare sight for her on screen. During filming, Day faced a cancer scare, leading her to quit smoking on her doctor's advice. Portraying Ruth Edding in Love Me or Leave Me, Day was expected to receive an Oscar nomination for her performance. However, she was not nominated, with the award ultimately going to Anna Moniani for the Rose Tattoo. In 2004, Doris Day received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from President George W. Bush. Despite this prestigious honor, Day could not attend the White House ceremony due to her intense fear of flying. Please share your thoughts on Doris Day's work and legacy in the comments. Remember to like, share, and subscribe for more content celebrating the creative spirits shaping entertainment. Your engagement helps us continue honoring the talents that have enriched our lives. Thank you for being part of this community.